Uh, hey, I'm live now, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, let me know about the class. Hey, shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. Pray y'all having a wonderful day. We preparing to atone. Uh, today's topic gonna be mortify your members. Probably gonna talk about a few different things. Hey, Michael Harris, Most High Christ, Bliss, Ray Turner, Makaya, Sister Ida, Sister Alyssa, Most High Christ, Bliss, Sister Yana, Sister Sheeran, Sister Shalom, Nathaniel, Most High Christ, Bliss, Adam, Susanna, Felice, Natanya, Paya, Nariah, Jariah, Shalom, y'all. So look, y'all, let's stand up. Let's face the east. Uh, let's go and send up the prayers. I want to jump right into it. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, hey Ray, give me some tissue, man. Give me some tissue just in case. Yeah, y'all, I'm a little bit under the weather, but uh. Gotta do this class. Gotta do it. Uh, today's title is Mortify Your Members. Uh, I want to get it to the point where when I do these classes, uh, we have had an IT team here. Uh, I'm finna post. I'm open up with collages two. I mean collages three and five. Now I dealt with a lot of this this Sabbath, but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make my class go different from the way I went this Sabbath because I touched on uh, different topics. Now I know a lot of y'all were like, "Well, look, we yeah, we we went in the Sabbath class this Sabbath. I don't know what you're talking about." I'm gonna post uh, something online real quick. Hold on. And we're going to open up with Colossians 3 and 5. Marita, I don't know where the hell he at. <laughs> uh, 
let me see. I don't, um, I, now, this is on Wikipedia. It's a mortification of the flesh. And I'm just going to... Uh, I'm just going to post this meaning up here so you can know what mortification of the flesh is. And then we'll read the scripture. All right, hold on. All right, so I just posted that up. I just posted it in the chat so y'all should see it. So I'm going to read mortification of the flesh. Mortification of the flesh is an act by which an individual a group seeks to mortify or put to death their sinful nature. So that's what it means to mortify the flesh, is to put to death your sinful nature. It's a part of the process of sanctification. And Christianity common forms of mortification that are practiced to this day include fastness, abstinence, as well as pious kneeling. So mortify is to put to death your self and nature. Let's open up with Colossians 3 and 5, because the Day of Atonement is coming up. And hey, all praise to the Most High, y'all. Hey, man. Hey, and, and prove that the Most High knew that we was going to sin from the beginning. He gave us the Day of Atonement. So y'all always remember that. There's proof. The Most High knew we was going to mess up, because he gave us a day to atone. So we should be thanking the Most High right now just, you know, to have that day uh, to be able to atone for our sin. You know what I'm saying? And make sure when you atone, you atone in righteousness. Because a lot of y'all, this is what ends up happening. I did this class. I did a class called Atone in Righteousness last year. And uh, it's, it should be online somewhere. And what ends up happening is a lot of you, you don't atone in righteousness. You'll keep the day of atonement, but you'll take all the weight from the previous year and you are bringing it to the next year with you so you you really did atone in righteousness you know what i'm saying hey if you're gonna forgive a brother and sister you're supposed to forgive them before the day of atonement you should be going past the day of atonement still dealing with the same issues the same stuff that means you did atone in righteousness so when you atone, atone make sure you're doing it in righteousness make sure that you ain't holding no grudges you know what I'm saying? Make sure that uh, you don't got a spirit of hate or strife on you after you fast. You know what I'm saying? Because after you fast, uh, hey, look, after we fast, it's always a test coming. The Most High will test you after you fast. So let's open up with uh, Colossians 3 and 5. It says, Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. And let's talk about your flesh. This is going into mortification of the flesh, fornication. Uh, to mortify fornication, the scripture teaches us to get married. What is fornication, sexual immorality? But to mortify fornication, the scriptures tell us to get married. Let's get there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 1. So to mortify fornication the scripture teaches us to get married first corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 now concerning the things where whereof he wrote unto me it is good for a man not to touch a woman so this goes into abstinence right there you know what i'm saying now nah, remember paul said hell i wish some of you was like me paul didn't deal with a woman you know, some, some of you brothers, you can't maintain. Some of you sisters, you can't maintain. But it's good to practice after this. It say, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. You see that? That's how you avoid fornication. That's how you, uh, that's how you are able to subdue or uh, uh, that's how you're able to put to death that self of nature of fornication. By getting married. Now, even once you marry, it's still steps that you must follow even within marriage. Verse 3. Let the husband render to the wife do benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Because a lot of times in marriage, you know, uh, one spouse will get mad at the other spouse, 
and they hold out on their spouse. And then their spouse have thoughts of fornication, thoughts of adultery. That's when their spouse start to have thoughts of adultery. So the scriptures say, let the husband render to the wife do benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband have not power of his own body, but the wife. So in marriage, neither, neither one of you have power over your own body. Neither one of you have power over your own body. And that's how you are able to uh, put the death, you know what I'm saying, that uh, the spirit of fornication or that member. That's how you're able to mortify their self and nature. Don't hold back on each other. Let's read on. It say, defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. So you don't supposed to defraud one another neither. Why? Because if you defraud one another, you can have thoughts of sexual immorality, adultery, fornication. You have lustful thoughts. So the most high put these things in the Bible. To keep us from falling into temptation. First Corinthians 75, read. Except it be for consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. You see that? Consent for a time. So consent meaning uh you let one another know, look, hey, come this Friday, I'm gonna fast. Or you let your 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 wife let you know, look, I'm gonna do a two-day fast. She should let you know. So that way she she should come consent with you about the matter. Because you you know what I'm saying, you it it happened plenty of times within the body where a brother, you know, he he uh won't, you know, say he got a desire for his wife, and then his wife tell him he fat she fasted. Like, what the hell? <coughs> Since you didn't let me know you was gonna be on a fast. See, if he known that his wife was faster sooner, then he already know, oh, man, you know, hey, Friday ain't going down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that way he able to sit up there. That way he won't be in, uh, that way he will have that spirit on him well, with, okay, after she don't want to give him none, he upset, he mad. Nah, next thing you know, he thinking about fornication. He thinking about sexual immorality. You know what I'm saying? Read it up, read up. And it, and likewise, same with your husband. Your husband, you just can't say, oh, I'm going on a two-day fast, and then you didn't, you know, no type of consent with your wife. You didn't let her know. Because, uh, hell, yeah, she come home, let's just say she get off work, she, she been feeding for you all day. She needs stress relief. And, hell, you talking about all oh, fasting tonight, baby. Now she pissed off. Why? Because... She was expecting to come home and to be able to lay down with her husband. The same way the husband be expecting to come home and lay down with his wife. You know what I'm saying? This is how we subdue. This is how we put to death our sinful nature. Read that again. Except it be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fast and prayer. Read. And come together again. That Satan tip you not for your inconsistency. You see that? So it's letting you know that, look, when you ain't doing it, Satan going to tempt you. It's already letting you know Satan going to tempt you. You're going to go through temptations when y'all restrain it from each other. That's what it's letting you know. Don't restrain from each other. Because when you restrain it from each other, it's letting you know Satan going to be tempting you. So after you come out there fast, the scripture said, Paul said, look, y'all need to come together again for Satan. Tempt you for your incontinency. Let's look up incontinency. Incontinency. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. No, this one, uh, lack of self-restraint. That's what it means, lack of self-restraint. So you're supposed to come together again. So now what was it? That's it right there. So now, so to go right back to Colossians 3, verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication. So in order to put the death... There's self and nation of 
fornication. The scriptures say to avoid the fornication, that every man have his own wife and let every woman have their own husband. Then it gives you steps after that on how you're supposed to deal with each other in marriage. <coughs> Your body don't belong to you. Her body don't belong to her. Why? Because if y'all restrain from each other, Satan will tempt you because you restrain it from each other. He'll tempt you to go back into that sin of fornication or to go back into that sin of adultery. All right, where we at? Read on. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Now, to mortify uncleanness, you must purify yourselves. How do we purify ourselves? Let's go to 1 Peter 1 and verse 22. Unclean. To put to death our sinful nature of uncleanness, we must learn to purify ourselves. 1 Peter 1 and 22. Listen to this. 1 Peter 1 and verse 22. See, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. You see that sin, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. What is the truth? Let's get Psalms 119, verse 142. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. All right. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Read. And thy law is the truth. You're saying thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. So go right back to 1 Peter 1 and 22. So to mortify that member of uncleanness, you must learn to purify yourselves. Read that again. See, you have purified your soul. Seeing you have purified your soul, read. And obeying the truth. And obeying the truth, read. Through the spirit. Through the spirit. Through the spirit. Read on. Unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Read. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Read. Being born again. That's the way we purify our souls. Being born again. Read. Not a corruptible seed. Not a corruptible seed because all of us, we came into this world corrupt. All of us learn sin. All of us learn sin from birth. Read. But of incorruptible. Read. By the word of God, which liveth in a body forever. So we purify ourselves through the word of God. Now, let me see. Let's go to Leviticus real quick. Chapter 20. And that's how we mortify that member of uncleanness. Go to... Uh, Leviticus 20, verse 7. Leviticus chapter 20, and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Let's look up sanctify. Sanctify. Okay, set apart is one, declare holy, concentrate. Free from sin, purify. So in order to mortify that member of uncleanness, you got to sanctify yourselves. You got to purify yourselves. And how do you do that? Through the word of God. Read. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. He said, be ye holy. That's how you purify yourselves. Cleanse yourselves and be ye holy. Purify yourselves and be ye holy. Put away that spirit of uncleanness. That's plenty of things that make us unclean. Read. For I am the Lord your God. Uh-huh. And you shall keep my statutes. And, and you shall them. keep my statutes and do them, read. I am the Lord <coughs> who sanctify you. <coughs> and that's how the Lord sanctify us. By keeping his statutes and doing them. Don't be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word also. That's how the most high purify us. Now, I will, I, I will read the whole chapter of Leviticus 19, 20, 21, because it tells you the things that makes us unclean. Like, let's, let's go and get one. Let's go to, uh, let me see, let me see. Verse 13, jump down to 13. Verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, read. both of them have committed abomination. You see that both of them committed abomination. Read. 
they shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. Their blood shall be upon them. Look, so there's, he's sitting up there, he's saying, look, so some of you, if you battle in that spirit of homosexuality, he's saying, look, purify yourselves. A man, matter of fact, let's go and jump over to 18. And let's start with verse 22. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. Read. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. He said that's abomination. That's uncleanness. That's uncleanness. So if you're dealing with that spirit of homosexuality, God asking you to purify yourself because that's an unclean spirit right there. Read verse 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast. Now I know, I know a lot of y'all be like, why? Is, why do we have to read verse 23? Trust me, y'all. We have people within the congregation that have laid down with beasts. And it, it happened. Read on. To defile thyself therewith. You see that? To defile thyself therewith. To make yourself unclean thereby. To defile your soul. Read. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. Read. It is confusion. Read on. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. Read on. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Read. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself formed it out her inhabitants. Read on. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations. Read. Neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that's adjoined among you. So when we sat up there, we went through as uh, Moses was giving us all these laws, then when you get right back to Leviticus 20, he said, look, sanctify yourselves. Don't move in the spirit that they moving in. So now let's go back to Colossians 3 and 5. So remember, y'all, to mortify that member of uncleanness, you must purify yourselves. And how do we do that? Through the laws of God. Obey, applying the laws of God to our life. That's what makes us clean. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, what's that word? Uh, uh, get Ephesians 5 and 26 real quick. Ephesians 5, just thought about that. The word is what makes you clean. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. And cleanse it. How the Lord going to purify you? Because remember, sanctify means purify. Read. With the washing of water by the word. With the washing of water by the word. That's how the Most High God is purifying us. So in order to mortify that member of uncleanness, you got to apply the word of God to your life. Let's go back to Colossians 3 and 5 now. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. All right. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth. So he said, mortify your members. Put to death the sinful nature. I mean, the sinful nature. Read. Fornication. Fornication, how we do that? Get married, Rick. Uncleanness. Uncleanness, how we do that? We must purify ourselves through the word of God, applying the laws. Read on. In order to affection. In order to affection. Now, let's get an example of an order to affection. Give me Romans 1. <coughs> Romans 1. Now, let's start at verse uh, 24. Romans chapter 1 and verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness Read. through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Read. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship is served a creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affection. Read. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. You said it said for even the women did change the natural use into debt, which is against nature. That's an example of ordinate affection. Women with women. Read on. And likewise also the men. So this is how you know that verbs 26 was talking about women and women because he said and likewise also the men. What they do? Leaving the natural use of the woman. Read. Heard that their lust one towards another. You see that? So the men was burning in their lust one towards another. Likewise, the women was doing also burning in their lust one towards another. That's an example of inordinate affection. Women with women, men with men. That's not ordinary. Read on. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. Read. And receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was beat. So, but now it seems ordinary because like, hey, like hell, Esau and 
like he's gay, uh, homosexuals rights, transgenders rights. And now, you know what I'm saying, it started to seem ordinary to the kids to our children that's growing up. Now they pushing their agenda. They, they pushing the Sodom agenda through our school and things like that. But that's inordinate affection. That's an inordinate affection. And to mortify them uh, inordinate affection, go to Wisdom of Solomon 6, 6 and 11. How do you mortify that member of inordinate affection? You send up there pedophilia. That's inordinate affection. Bestiality, that's inordinate affection. That is not the way God set things up. The most I didn't set up men to be with men, women to be with women, men to be with animals, men to be with children. The most I didn't set that up. That's inordinate, inordinate affection. Here wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 11. Read. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 <coughs> and verse 11. <coughs> Wherefore, set your affection upon my word. You see that? Set your affection upon my word. Listen to this. Read. Desire them, and ye shall be instructed. God said, desire my word, and you're going to be instructed. And in the word of God, God said, look, let's get this real quick. Let's get uh, Genesis 2 real quick. And let's... Uh, Let's get verse 24. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his it mother. It says, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, read. And shall cleave unto his wife. Unto his husband. Unto his wife. Unto his wife. God set it up where man and woman is ordained to be together. That's a uh, natural affection. Read on. And they shall be one flesh. Hey, let's get First Timothy five. So we got to put the gift that sinful nature, that sinful nature of an ordinate affection and a set our affection towards God's word because within His word, His word instructs us on how we're supposed to be. What I say again? First Timothy five, I think. Twenty five. Now nah, one. Now nah, now nah, I'm on one fifteen. I think. Hold on. Let me look at. It. Or one in fourteen. Let me look at it first. Okay. Uh first Timothy is five. Verse 14. First Timothy chapter five and verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry. You see that the younger women marry. Who they marry? Who these younger women are marrying to? Men. Men. Read. Bear children. Bear children. That's the only way. That they can birth children is by doing what? Being with another man. Now Esau, he so damn. Esau is the devil. He's so evil. And he tried to defy God with his signs. So um what 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 Esau do, Esau got these little sperm banks. <coughs> well, men sell they uh sell their sperm, and now you have these women, uh women with women, they get together, they get married. And then they go to a sperm bank and they uses the man's sperm to bring forth a child without the man being there. You know what I'm saying? This is how Esau opposes God. Matter of fact, let's get there real quick. I think that's collages, ain't it? Uh, what is it? Six, six, yeah, okay, read that. Six, first Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. This is this. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Read. Avoid profane and vain babbling. And oppositions of science falsely so called. This is how Esau opposes God with his signs. Oh, okay, look, you can marry whoever you want. Oh, you still want kids? We got you. We got a sperm bank over here. Oh, okay, look, you can matter of fact, you can pick uh what who you want the uh your baby how you how you want your baby to look and everything. Uh you want the sperm of a black man, we got the sperm of the black man. Oh, okay, you want to be tall, you want to be skinny, you want to be in shape. Medium bill, cut bill. Oh, you like a little weight on them? They got every damn thing for you, but they use this their size to oppose God. You know what I'm saying? For real. All right, what was that? You uh, still did five fourteen. Go right back. I was therefore that the younger women marry, bear children. It say let the younger women marry, bear children. That that's the natural use of a woman. Get married, bear children. Read. 
Guide the house. Guide the house. This is what God requires of you, sisters. Read. Give, give good occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Read. For some are already turned aside after Satan. Yeah, so to in order to mortify that member of inordinate affection, <coughs> excuse me, y'all, we must learn to set our affection towards the word. Because go right back to Wisdom Solomon 6 and 11 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 11. Wherefore, set your affections upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. You see that? He said, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. We find our instructions out of the word of God. If you want instructions, that's the way you get instructions. From the word of God. Read on. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Read. Yay. She is easily seen of them that love her. If you love wisdom, I'm telling you, if you love wisdom, you're going to see it. That's why a lot of you brothers and sisters, you tuned in now because you love wisdom. The scripture says easily seen of them that love her. You know the things that, that we bring it out. You know that it's of the Lord and you know that these are wise saying it's wisdom. And it's easily seen of them that love her. Read. And found of such a secret. And a lot of y'all, you was been seeking wisdom. And now you done found it. You're like, dang, I never heard the Bible being taught like this before. Hold on, how, how can you, you, you went to church all your life, but okay, let's just say if the pastor did read Colossians 3 and 5, but he never told you what things you need to do to be able to put the death that sent to sinful nature. You know what I'm saying? So wisdom, it, the scripture said wisdom it's easily seen of them that love her and found of such a seeker. So if you seeking wisdom and then bam, you end up running into our classes. We got a lot of them. You will see the wisdom. You'll see the understanding that comes out. Read on. That's if you love them. That's if you love wisdom. Read. You'll know what it is. Read. She prevented them that desire her. It says she prevented them that desire her. Because some of y'all, let's just say, some of you brothers and sisters, you probably... Before you heard the truth, you was thinking that you probably was, uh, what's the word, promiscuous? You probably was curious. Some of you sisters probably was thinking, I wonder what it's like to be with another woman. Why? Because everybody was doing it. Some of you brothers, you probably was like, hell, I wonder what it's like to be with another man. Because what? Hell, yeah, y'all were seeing a lot of people doing it. But then God wisdom came into you. And it say, she prevented them that desire her. Let me look up the word prevent. 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 The action of stopping something from happening or arising. So God wisdom was made manifest to you, and guess what? It stopped you from being in the midst of homosexuality, or it stopped you from being a murderer, stopped you from being a fornicator, stopped you from, it prevented you from doing these things. Read that again. She prevented them that desire her, and making herself first known unto them. It, it stopped you from, it stopped you from doing these things. You heard the brothers out there on the streets bringing the word forth, preaching the word of God. And then that thought of homosexuality was in your head. You heard the scriptures like, oh, I didn't know that was in the Bible. I didn't know homosexuality was against God. Oh, man. Hell, I didn't know that I couldn't steal. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I didn't know that um, it's wrong for me to be sleeping around with different women. Because you know a lot of a lot of dudes they say this, well, we're from Africa. We always slept around with different women. We always walked around naked. You know what I'm saying? I didn't hear people say this stuff before. But then you heard the word of God, and the word of God prevented you. It stopped you from being a whoremonger. Why? Because it was a judgment waiting on you for being a whoremonger. The word of God stopped you from being a lesbian. Why? Because it's a judgment for being a lesbian. 
the word of God stop you from being a transgender. Why? Because the uh, it's a judgment for being a transgender. The word of God stopped you from being a thief. Why? Because one day you was going to steal from the wrong person and, and you was going to be judged for that. You was going to die. So read that again, verse 13. She prevented them that desire her. She prevented them that desire her. Read. And making herself first known unto them. And making herself first known unto them. So the Lord said, you know what? Before this soul destroy itself, let me make myself known to them. That's when you heard Deuteronomy 28. You heard about the curses. You're like, hold on, we went into slavery. Uh, hold on, the slave ships is in the Bible. The yokes of iron on our neck was in the Bible. Us got to serve our enemies and want all things. It's in the Bible. Then you learn that you was an Israelite. And then you learn that we broke the commandments of God. And then you start to uh, learn what the commandments of God is. And, and, and uh, why? Uh, to avoid a judgment that's coming, that's waiting on you. The most I saved a lot of us, I'm telling you right now. And when I'm saying saved, meaning not saved from the destruction to come, but saved us from a judgment that was on the way. Some of y'all would have went to that club. If you didn't learn to keep the Sabbath, some of y'all was going to go to that club. That one Sabbath, they was going to shoot the whole damn club up and you could become a paraplegic. Anything. So, it prevented them that desire her and making her self first known unto them. Go back to Colossians 3 and 5. So to, to mortify their member of inordinate affections, you must set your affections upon the word of God. Because through the word of God, that's how we receive our instructions. All right, where we at? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Colossians 3 and verse 5. Mortify therefore your members. Which are upon the earth. Uh -huh. Fornication. Fornication. Unclean. So and to mortify their member fornication, the scriptures say get married. Marriage is um marriage is honorable. To mortify their member uncleanness, the scriptures say you must learn to purify yourselves. And how do we purify ourselves? Through applying the word of God. Read. In order to affection. And to mortify their Remember, in order to affection, you must set your affections upon the word of God because in his words is instructions showing you what to do and what not to do. Let you know, hey, look, that's inordinate right there. Don't do that. Oh, this is the way to go. God shows you. Matter of fact, let's get that straight commandments to know what to do to live and to avoid punishment. I think this second edge of seven. Second edge of seven. Yeah. God gave us straight commandments, y'all. Listen to this. Matter of fact, start at verse 20 for me. Second Andrews chapter 7 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of God that is set before them. Hey, y'all, a lot of people going to die because they despise the law of God that is set before them. And the most high using us to do it. <coughs> Read up. For God has given straight commandments. And he gave us straight commandments. Read. Now, this word straight is S-T-R-A-I-T. Let's look up, look up straight. Hold on. Straight. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I guess I gotta find. Oh no, I know this ain't the right meaning right here. I guess I need to find Bible. Let me look up the Bible. Hold on. If I can't find it, because I know this ain't it right here. Close, intimate, as a straight degree of faith. Strict, rigorous. Okay, there we go. Strict commandments. All right, I got it. Strict or not crooked. No, nah, that's straight right there. So it's a strict or rigorous. Strict. I right, go right back to what you was there. Read. For God have given straight commandments. God have given straight commandments. Read. To such as came, what they should do to live. So God gave us the commandments to, 
to know what to do to live, breathe. Even as they came. And what they should observe to avoid punishment. And what we should observe to avoid punishment. So to mortify their member of inordinate affections, you must set your affections upon the word of God. He said, desire them, you're going to receive the instructions. You're going to get those straight commandments to know what to do to live and what to do to avoid punishment. All right, let's go from there. Colossians 3 and 5, again from the top. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Now, I'll take up my time with this class, y'all. Read. Mortify, therefore, your members, Read. which are upon the earth. Fornication. So to mortify their member of fornication, <coughs> First Corinthians 7, 1 and 2 tells us to get married. Read. Uncleanness. To mortify their member of uncleanness, First Peter 1 and 22 through 25 tell us we must purify ourselves. Read. In order that affection. To mortify their member of inordinate affection, Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 11 tell us we must set our affections upon the word to receive the instructions. Because a lot of people that like, you know, and I know I keep using the example with uh, the homosexuals and stuff like that, but a lot of them, they didn't know that it was in order to affect it because Esau teaching them, well, it's the way you're supposed to be. At first, Esau taught that it was a mental illness. Now he's teaching like, oh, you're born like that, and this is a sexual preference. That's a damn lie. That is a damn lie. You know what I'm saying? Read on. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. Now, what is evil concupiscence? Evil concupiscence is evil, strong, sexual lust. And to put to death that self of nature, the scriptures say you must learn temperance. What is temperance? What is temperance? Let's look up temperance. Temperance. All right, I'm looking up temperance. All right, I just need the definition. All right. Temperance. Okay. Uh, hold on, y'all. Y'all give me a minute. All right, let me try. All right, it's a moderation in act, moderation in action, thought or feeling, restraint. So, in order to mortify that member of evil concupiscence, you must learn self restraint, self control. Self control. It's a moderation in or abstinence from the use of alcoholic beverages. Uh, all right, this is getting dealing with alcohol. But you must learn self-control, self-restraint. You got to learn that. That's the only way you're going to mortify the member of evil concupiscence. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter 1 and 6. And that's you must learn temperance, self-control. I like to control your emotions, uh, your uh, emotions, discipline. That's what you got to learn. Let's read uh, 2 Peter 1 and 6. 2 Peter chapter 1 and 6. Matter of fact, start up real quick. Jump up to uh, verse. Uh, this we want three. No. Uh, hold on. Is that, oh, you know what? I'm in the wrong chapter, bro. My fault. Yeah, start right there. Three. Second Peter chapter one and verse three. This is according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and God. You see that? Hey, the Lord have given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Read through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of Christ, because He the one who calling us into glory and virtue. Read on. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promise. Hey, y'all, look, hey, the scriptures say this something for the pre this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Like right now, man, we think we're we, we think we're really going through some. But if we make it through it, the Lord like, oh, man, look, all that right there, it, it, look, you're going to be glad you went through it. Because for once, you ain't going to want to sin no more. You ain't going to want to be disobedient no more. Read. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Read. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Read. 
having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See? And besides this, give it all diligence. Add to your faith So virtue. he said, look, add to your faith virtue, read. And to virtue, knowledge. And to virtue, knowledge, read. And to knowledge, temperance. And to knowledge, what? Temperance. And to knowledge, temperance. Self-control, self-restraint, self-discipline. You got to learn to discipline yourself. That's the only way you're going to put to death the sinful nature of evil concupiscence. So y'all sit up there and you look at porn for five hours straight. You got to learn some type of damn discipline. You got to learn to control yourself, control your eyes. Every big booty woman that walk past, here you go, oh. Every long feet man that walk past, here the sisters go, oh. Look, you got to learn self-control, learn to discipline yourselves. You got to sit up there. You got to be able to make a covenant with your eyes. Job did that. He said, look, I got to make a covenant with my eyes. Why should I look on a man? You got to learn self-discipline. Sometimes yo, your flesh is saying, damn, look. <laughs> but your spirit is saying, I'm going to look straight ahead. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. And for you married brothers, man, I know you married brothers, you be with your wife. And, and, and your ass be sitting up there. Your wife see you looking. Y'all better cut it out. And, and trust me, she see you when you discipline yourself, too. She see when you discipline yourself too. I was looking at, you know, they be doing these little parody skit videos. And dude had did one. You know, I don't know if that was his real wife or not, his girlfriend. But anyway, uh, the girl walked past him, right? And, and instead of him having self-control and discipline, y'all now y'all know how these parody videos go online. Instead of him having self-control and discipline, he like this in front of his girl. And then, you know what I'm saying, his girl smacked the hell out like, come on, bro, you see me right here. Some of y'all brothers like that. And then he was like, but you see it too? You, you see it? Like, no, nah, you can't move in that spirit, y'all. We got to have self-control. We got to have discipline. <coughs> and that's temperance right there. That's how you sit up there and mortify or put the death that's in for nature of evil Concupiscence, you know what I'm saying? Them uh, evil, strong sexual desires that be running through your mind. What we at? Read that again. And Verse besides five. This giving all, giving all diligence. It say giving all diligence. Read. Add to your faith. Because you you say you believe. The scripture say add to your faith virtue. Let's look up the word virtue real quick. Virtue. Because all of this, you gotta have virtue. In order to have temperance. All right, here we go. Virtue. Behavior showing high moral standards. So he said, add to your faith behavior that shows high moral standards. Read on. And to virtue, knowledge. And into their behavior that show high moral standards, knowledge. What knowledge is that? That's the knowledge of God. Remember, they say this is our wisdom and knowledge and understanding in the uh, sight of the nations. Read on. And to knowledge <coughs> temperance. And to knowledge temperance. That's your self control. That's the self discipline. Read on. And to temperance patience. And to temperance patience. Because once you learn to be more patient, guess what? Once you learn to be more self controlled, you become more patient. You patient. That's why you have some of them brothers and sisters, they were like, man, I ain't worried about nothing, especially when the trials come around. I know some of y'all, you know, y'all new people, y'all come in. If you got some some, some brothers and sisters that's been do, enduring in the truth for a while, then hey, you'll see the level of patience they got, even with dealing with other brothers and sisters. That's why when brothers and sisters have issues, they be like, hey, they, they try to counsel you in a way to be able to deal with it. Because for the most part, here, yeah, they probably already went through it before. A lot of us counsel you just based on our experiences and on the things we already been through, even within marriage, even with dealing with the brethren, dealing with the sisterhood, dealing with the congregation. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just you being counseled based on the experience that we already and have. And even when you go to Romans 5, it tells you that that experience teaches you patience. So it says, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, read. Into patience. temperance, patience, into patience, godliness, mm -hmm. into godliness, brotherly kindness, into brotherly kindness, charity, into brotherly kindness, charity. Let's go to Galatians 5 now. Galatians 5, 
verse uh, 22. So we got to learn self-control, y'all. Self-discipline. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. They say the fruits of the Spirit is love. Joy. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Read. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. You see that temperance, self-control, self Discipline. Read. Against such there is no law. It says, uh, against such there is no law, meaning no judgment. Because if you got these attributes, who can judge you for having these attributes right here? Who can judge you for having the fruits of the Spirit? Nobody can judge you. Read. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. With the affections and lust. You see that their evil concupiscence. They crucify. When, when you're moving in the spirit of Christ and you move and you got the fruits of the spirit, it say, like, look, you're gonna crucify the flesh. You're gonna put the death in self and nation. Uh, nature. I don't know why I almost keep saying nation. I guess nature and nature. It's sounding like. <laughs> hey, when you're a rapper, y'all I'm telling y'all something about rappers, man. When you know how to rap, you, you can make any word rhyme to say damn the sound like. But uh and what it say? And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So now let's go right back to Colossians 3 and 5. So in order to mortify the member of evil concupiscence, you got to learn temperance. You got to learn self-control. You got to have self-discipline. You got to have self-restraint. Read. Elijah chapter 3, verse 5. <coughs> Mortify therefore your members which are upon the face of the earth. Which are upon the earth. Read. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. In order to affection. Read. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. Read. And covetousness. Read. Which is idolatry. So now, how do you mortify the member of covetousness, which is idolatry? How do you mortify that? You must learn to be content. You got to learn to be content, you sisters. You got to learn to be content with your husband. Husband, you got to be learn to be content with your wives. Guess what? If your husband provides the chief things in life, you got to be uh, content with, the, with, the, with him providing those chief things in life. We see a lot of people fall because they ain't content with what they have. Let's, get, let's see first and foremost what the Lord said a man is supposed to have. Let's get this real quick. Let's get Ecclesiastical chapter 29. Is it 29? Verse 21. Yeah. Sirach chapter 29 and verse 21. Read. The chief thing for life is water. Now, this is the chief thing for life. Water. And bread. Food. And clothing. Something to cover your body with. And a house to cover shame. And a place to live. These are the chief things in life. These are the things we're supposed to be content with. And the reason why I'm saying sisters, because a lot of you sisters, man, you you so lost and trapped in Babylon, y'all covetous as hell, and you don't even be saying it. If your husband provides the chief things in life, you're supposed to be content. You got to mortify you or put to death that sinful nature of covetousness, because that's what's causing that's what's gonna cause issues in a lot of y'all marriages. Let's prove that. Go to James four. You got to learn to be content, and we're gonna deal with that. James 4. And let's start at verse 1. James chapter 4, verse 1. 3. From which come wars and fightings among you. You know why you you and your you you want to know why y'all having fights within the household? Come they not hit even of your lust, of your covetous spirit that you got, read. That war your members. That war your members because you won't mortify, mortify it. You won't put the death that sin for nature. Ye lust and have not. So you coveting and you still don't got to read. Ye kill and desire to have. Or you, show up, or you hate. You hate and desire to have, read. And cannot obtain. And you cannot obtain, read. You fight at war. You fight at war. Y'all arguing, read. Yeah, you have not. And you still don't get it, read. Because you ask. Not. Because you ask not, read. You ask and receive not. And then you ask and don't receive. Because you ask of this. Because you ain't asking for the right things. 
that you may be that you may consume it upon your lust. That you may consume it upon that covetous spirit you got. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. And he let you know because remember, covetous, covetousness is idolatry. That spiritual adultery. Read on. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You want to be a friend of the world, you're going to be an enemy of God. So mortify that member covetousness. Go to First Timothy uh, 6, verse 6. You got to learn to be content, y'all. First Timothy chapter six and verse six. Mm -hmm. But godliness with contentment. You see that, man? If you keeping the commandments. Godliness with contentment is what? It's great game. He said that's a great game. Read. And, ha and having food and no nah, seven. For we bought nothing. For we brought nothing into this world. Hey, y'all, we ain't read nothing into this world. Read. And it is certain. We could carry nothing out. And you ain't going to look. You can sit up there and cover all the possessions you want. You ain't taking none of it with you. You just I just thought about King Solomon because King Solomon said something about that, about gaining possessions just to leave it to a fool. Hold on. Let me see that. Hold on. Let me find it. And, I, and I, I had to go there because uh, a lot of y'all, you arguing in your households, you, you, you husband and wives, you having issues and problems, and, and that's because it's, it's a covetous there. He let you know what it is. That's why y'all fight, because it's a covetous spirit that you got to be learned to be content with what you got. The most I know everything we want, he going to... Uh, the most high, he, he, he gonna give you what you need. But if you got the chief things in life, now if you, the, the scriptures do say, don't be comfortable in a poor state. So none of us supposed to be here. Yeah, you comfortable? You living in a damn box? No, you don't be content with living in a box. We we hey we Israelites, we children of the Most High God. So you ain't comfortable living in no damn box. But if you got a house to cover shame. If you got bread, you got water, you got clothing, and you, you're able to t uh, sufficiently take care of yourself and sustain yourself with these things, the Lord is telling us, asking us to be content. Godliness with contentment is a great game. Everybody ain't going to have the big money. You know what I'm saying? A lot of y'all, you know, Bishop said all the time, a lot of sisters, they'll go to another sister house and they'll see their house and be like, damn, their house big as hell. And then they'll go back to their husband and be like, look, why we don't got a house like that? Sis, that's a covetous spirit right there. That's a covetous spirit. Just like I, I said in class this weekend, a lot of these sisters, they'll understand that, okay, you got, in, in the truth, you got some sisters that stay at home. They don't work a job. They don't do nothing. They just take care of the kids. And you got other sisters that hell, they going out working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, just like their husband. And you wonder why their household, they able to get these type of houses and drive them type of cars. How many hours is your ass ready to go put in, sis, to help attain these type of things? But you ready to go work 50, 60 hours a week? Because their husband and wife team, they working their ass off to get to the things they got. Or do you want to remain a stay-at-home mom? You going to remain a stay-at-home mom or whatever the hell you're doing, you might want to be content with having food, water, and clothing in the house to cover shame. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, you might want to be trying to bring something to the table. Because, you know, I brought it up because you got a lot of sisters that be complaining and not being content that, look, you already blessed. Y'all straight. The most already blessed y'all with what you need. But they see what everybody else got. And now they just, that's why I say you desire to have and you can't attain because you act amiss. You know what I'm saying? For real, be content with what you got. And if the most I see fit for you to have it, the most I like, you know what? I'm not going to bless this couple. I am not going to bless this couple. 
for real. Because you ain't acting you ain't acting right. You ain't doing the right thing. You just want to attain it because of your lust. You don't even need it. Basically, that's what the Lord said. If you try to attain it because of your lust, he said you don't even need it. Go right back to first Timothy six. It was something I was trying to find. I couldn't find it though. But Solomon was saying how he collected all the riches and he left it to a fool. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna see. I'm, I'm gonna find it. Read up. First Timothy chapter six and verse seven. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Well, you ain't taking none of this stuff with you when you go. Read and having food and raiment. Let us be there with content. You see that having food and raiment. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Food, raiment, a clothing, and a house to cover shade. Read. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful love. You see that? But those who want to be covetous, because that's what it's going, in, going into, covered in riches, covered in things. It say, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and prediction. Read on. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Read. Which while some coveted after. Which while some coveted after. They have erred from the faith. He said they have erred from the faith. You know what I'm saying? That covetous spirit caused people to err from the faith. Now you fight within your households. You war with one another. Wars and fight because of your covetous spirit. And not only that, even some of you single brothers and sisters too. Now I've seen brothers. They were straight. They was good. And they sat up there and uh, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they wanted to desire more and they fell out of the spirit chasing money. And it's true. Next thing you know, you, I'm telling you, you always see it. All the time, this will happen. You have brothers, they'll come in. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. They'll come in. They'll be going hard for this truth. And the next thing you know, they're still chasing riches. They're chasing money. And then after a while, you be like, hold on, man. Okay, uh, now nah, the brother, let me rephrase. You got brothers and sisters. They'll come in this truth. They'll be going hard. they doing their thing. they serving the Lord. And then next thing you know, now the most are already blessing them. They got a nice house. They got a nice car. They got everything. They cool. But what's the end of how? Because they keep desiring more. They understand that they got a spiritual covetousness on them. So then what they end up doing, because they desire more, they start to covet it, and then they chase after that. Next thing you know, you're like, damn, this brother working on the seven nine. Oh, that sister working on the seven nine. Then after a while, they fall clean in the hell up out of the truth. You burn the seal no more. Like, damn, man, I ain't seen brother such and such in a, in a month. Now, I ain't seen sister such and such in a month through that covetous spirit. So to mortify that member, you know what I'm saying, you got to learn to be content. All right, where we at? Verse 10. All right, read. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see that? And they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. They fall up out of the truth. Read on. But they, but then, O oh man of God. But thou, O oh man of God. But thou, O oh man of God. I think that's what they say. Hold on. Let me look at it real quick. Hey, uh, y'all, we read uh, 16 and 11. Hold on. It was like an end. My, my Hold on. I got it. I got it. Let me see something. That's first two to six, right? I'll let you know what it is. What are we at? Verse 11. Verse 11. Yeah, but thou. Yeah, but thou, O man of God. But thou, O man of God, flee from these days. You see that flee from these days, read. And follow after righteousness. Follow after the commandments. Godliness. Read. Faith. Love. Patience, meekness. All right, go back to Colossians 3 and 5. So he said, flee these things. Don't worry about all that. Be content. Be content. Godly with contentment is a great, great game. All right, y'all better get ready to wrap it up. Read. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, 
in order their affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So in order to mortify their member of fornication, the scriptures say get married. First Corinthians 7, 1 and 2. To mortify their member of uncleanness, the scriptures say you must purify yourselves. First Peter 1 and 22. Uh, to mortify their member of inordinate affection, you must set your affections towards the word. Desire them, and God going to show, God have instructions for you within the word on how to be that perfect man and on how to be that perfect woman, that natural man, that natural woman. Uh, to mortify that member of evil concupiscence, you must learn temperance, learn to be self-discipline, learn self-control, and to uh, mortify that member of uh, uh, covetousness, you got to learn to be content. Matter of fact, get this real quick. Uh, go to Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. All right. Let your conversation be without covetousness. You see there, say, let your conversations be without covetousness. Some people, conversations, it's all covetousness. It's all about what you want to attain. It's all about lust. That's why a lot of y'all falling off. You're going to purge yourself with many hurtful lust. Why? Your conversation is covetous as hell. What you want to attain, this and all the rest of that, instead of sitting up there being content with the state you in, being content with keeping the commandments and what the Most High has already blessed you with. Read. And be content with such things as you have. He said, look, and be content with such things as what you already have. Read on. For he has said, I will never leave thee. The Most High ain't going to leave you. He ain't going to forsake you. Read. Nor forsake thee. Nor forsake thee. That's it right there. I right, go to Isaiah now. So let's deal with the Day of Atonement. So the Atonement coming up, y'all. As the Day of Atonement come up, y'all, uh, it starts a nice sun now. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all meditate on these things right here. Let's go to Leviticus 23 first. And let's start at verse uh, 26. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also of the tenth day of the seventh month. All right. There shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation. So the, you. the uh, day of atonement is a holy convocation. All the men is to go out and teach, and I'm going to show you why. I'll give you the scripture in a minute. Read. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, afflicting your souls, that's us fasting. You know what I'm saying? Now, we don't offer an offering made by, we don't offer offering to the Lord no more because Christ came and died for our sins. So we don't offer offering to the Lord anymore. You know what I'm saying? Christ is this offering. Let's get there real quick in Hebrews 10. <coughs> Hebrews 10 and 5. I see you under the weather too, man. My work is cold. Mm. Hebrews 10 and let's get verse 4. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. Three. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. You see that? He said, look, hey, it ain't possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering that what is not. Read. But a body has not prepared. Me. So the body that has been prepared is the body of Christ. You know what I'm saying? Just jump on down to verse 9. Verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. The first covenant, which was sacrificed for animals, read. Then he may establish the second. Then he established the new covenant. Christ died for our sin. <coughs> Excuse me, read. By the which will, will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So now we don't offer an offer made by fire to the Lord because now we are sanctified by the offer offering of the body of Christ uh, once and for all. Go right back to where you was at. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 27. Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, and it shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls. 
the offer it, it offered an offer made by fire unto the Lord. Now he said we should inflict our souls, meaning we supposed to fast. Now, how do we fast? Because I know some of y'all be like, oh, I'm gonna do a water fast. A water, water drinking water ain't fasting, y'all. Let's get the book of Jonah. That's the stuff that they made up in the world. This is not a proper fast. Now, if you want to do something, now you can't, I mean, uh, you know, outside the day of atonement where you say, hey, I'm gonna drink water for three to four, five days. It ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? It's your choice. Let's read that. The book of Jonah, chapter three. Jonah, chapter three, verse and five. verse five. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast. All right, read. And put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Mm -hmm. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose so, from his throne. So you can stop right there. Hold on. So what was it? Uh, let me see. Okay, it says, so the people of Nineveh believe God and proclaim a fast, and they put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast. It said, let neither man nor beast. Herd nor flock. Read. Taste anything. Read. Let them not feed or drink water. You see that? Let them not feed or drink water. So when you fast, you don't supposed to feed or drink water. You don't supposed to feed or drink water. Go right back to what was that Leviticus. Matter of fact, let's get Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. So you don't supposed to eat or drink anything. I know some of y'all, I know brothers be acting crazy, but what if a piece of sweat fall and land on my tongue? First, bro, a piece of sweat shouldn't be falling and land, uh, landing on your tongue, bro. You bugging. <laughs> Something wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? What we at? Isaiah 583. All right, hold on. Let me get there. Start at one. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. So you brothers, hey, us brothers, we got to go out and teach, read. Really. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Read. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my way. As a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinances of justice, they take delight in approaching to God. Read. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, if thou seest not. So now... The Mohawk actually getting on us right here. Because he said, yet they seek me daily. They delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore, have we fasted, say they, and thou see it's not. So now the Lord like, look, they asking. Why we fasted and the Lord don't know this? Read. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul if thou takest no knowledge? Why why are we gonna go without food and water and the most high ain't paying no attention to us? Read. Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure. So now the Lord said, Look, in the day of your fast, you doing your own stuff you wanna you doing your own thing. Read. And exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife. He said, and look, he said, look, your fast that make you violent, make you want to fight. Read on. And to smite with the fist of wickedness. You see that? Make you violent, want to fight. Read. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day. So to make, he, your, to make your voice be heard on high. So he's like, you think you're going to fast and you're going to be fasting, doing these type of fasting, and I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to hear your prayers. Read on. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. What we at? Verse, Verse five. five. Okay, read that again. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. Three. Is it to bow down his head as a blurish as to spread sackcloth as and a, ashes? As a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Read. Will thou call this a fast? An acceptable day to the Lord. Read. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So. The Day of Atonement is the fast that the Most High chose to read. 
to loose the bands of wicked, to remove the chains of oppression, read to undo the heavy burdens, and to undo the yoke of injustice, read and to let the oppressed go free. So that's one of the reasons why we go out and teach, read, is that ye break every yoke, read. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and thou and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, read, when thou seest the naked that thou cover him, and that. And that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. So when we go out, and that's why we go out and teach on the Day of Atonement too, because he said, look, it's not this the fan that I have chosen to loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, that ye may break every yoke. You know what I'm saying? So this is why we go out and teach on the Day of Atonement as well. So look, y'all, I'm gonna wrap it up right there. Uh, this is my time. It's 1.30. I'll I'm, be I'm be trying to go with my time because I know you never know when another class is about to come on. Uh, because we be having little radio shows and stuff like that throughout the week too. Uh, anybody got any questions? So look, as you go into this day of atonement, make sure that you don't know say you ain't fasting for strife. You know what I'm saying? Or to smite with the fist of wickedness. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that, uh, what, was, what, what is he said? You ain't, uh, don't be, make sure you find it <coughs> pleasure. You know what I'm saying? Then do your own things. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you atone in righteousness and you, you fast and To loose the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppress go free, and that you break every yoke, and that you mortify your members. All right, any questions, y'all? If y'all don't got no questions, I'm going to wrap it up. And hey, y'all, I got a little cold, man. I don't know what it happened. I think it'd be for me getting out the shower and then the air condition be blowing <coughs> and it'd be uh, getting me sick. Like, it's one thing about me. I can't let my head be wet and get up under air. And I can't let my feet be wet. And I let my head be wet and my feet be wet. It's on. I'm getting sick. Uh, this, the, uh, remember, the the fast is from uh, tonight sundown to tomorrow sundown. To, from even to eat. Somebody asked some. Let me see. I didn't see it. Hey, all praises are yay. Lord's willing. Can we brush? No, you can't brush your teeth, sis. No. Don't nothing go in your mouth. Brush your teeth before you fast. Like everybody gonna be brushing their teeth tonight before the fast. Yeah, brush it tonight, but I know you gotta work, sis. Brush it tonight before the fast. I pray and hope you don't got that thunder breath. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people be having thunder breath. Jackie Chan breath. Ip man, bro. <laughs> we'll be kicking. <laughs> hey, all praises, uh, Michael. I think I got to do daily bread in the morning. Yeah, man, I don't know, man. There's been a lot of allergies around lately, man. I don't know. It, it's it, it's some in the air, man. I think Esau put some stuff in the air.
Yeah, man. You know what I was saying, uh, Sister Ida? I think I'm going to do, after uh, the atonement, I'm probably going to do like uh, seven days number fruit smoothies. Probably going to do that. You know, I, I have to start back. I got to start back working out, though. I ain't been working out like I used to. I worked all summer with, worked out all summer with the young prophets. After the summer was though, I ain't done a damn thing. And yeah, they was making me uh, better, too. <laughs> I need those young prophets. What if you don't know exactly what's going on, but you've been cut off from the congregation? Well, you still supposed to be watching online to, to, to you know, uh, that's what we tell people, like, you know, brothers and sisters that have been put out, uh, Miriam, to watch online. And they should, when you watch online, you should be up to date on everything because we always make an announcement. You probably can't come together in the Holy Convocation, but you still can fast. They're like like right now, like let's just say if you know about the Day of Atonement, the fast is tonight sundown. So tonight sundown, fast. No food, no water. You know what I'm saying? Anoint your head with some oil and, and pray. And ask God for forgiveness for your sins. Even if you got to work. Now, I know the scripture say you should do no survival work therein, but we in captivity, y'all. You still got to keep the Day of Atonement. We still got to keep it. I didn't pay, I fed seven days straight before, and I didn't work. With <laughs> I was working while fasting. You can do it. It ain't number one day. You know what I'm saying? You can do it. When it comes to the Day of Atonement, to whom do we make atonements with? Well, let's just sit up there and say if you had issues with certain brothers and sisters, you need to make sure that those issues is resolved. You know what I'm saying? You should make sure that those issues is resolved before you make the atonement with the Lord. Because the Lord said before you make atonement with him, you need to make sure that you and your brother, y'all straight. So the atonement is us atoning, making atonement with the Lord. This is what we make an atonement with. But before you make atonement with the Lord, the Lord wants you to make atonement with your brothers and sisters. Because how you going to go to the most high? And say you love him and ask him for forgiveness for something when you got an issue with a brother and sister here. You know what I'm saying? Hell no, nah, it ain't gonna happen like that. The Lord said, Look, how you gonna sit up there and say you love me, but you hate your brother and your sister on earth? Like you ain't never seen God. Look, that's how you know God black. Like you ain't never seen me before. You ain't know me. You know? But your brother, that's right in front of you. You can't, you know. So, yeah, we're making an atonement with the Lord, asking for forgiveness for our sins. <coughs> All the sins that we committed willingly and unwillingly the past year. Daily bread usually at 7 in the morning. Ziva, it's usually at 7 in the morning. Esau do that, so you will have to buy meds at the pharmacy. The former bids. You sure ain't lying, man. I was just looking at some. Uh, the other day when they said Rockefeller and the pharmaceutical companies rage uh, war on the natural cures. You know what I'm saying? They always doing stuff. <coughs> <coughs> Putting stuff in our food, just doing all types of stuff to keep us sick. Yeah, anoint your head with olive oil, because remember he said don't appear to be fast. What if it's worldly people that continues to wrong you? Well, it, you know, hey, it, it's up to you if you want to go to worldly people. But for the most part, they don't got the understanding of the Day of Atonement. They don't got the understanding of forgiveness and things like that. Now, you can go to them. And, and, and they got to remember, if you didn't wrong them, you can go to them and ask them for forgiveness. But don't be expecting worldly people to keep the commandments. That's all I'm going to say. Don't expect no worldly brother or sister to keep the commandments. I ain't expecting nobody in the world that didn't wrong me to come to me today before the day of atonement. Because they ain't going to keep the atonement and be like, hey, would you forgive me in this? I'm not expecting that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, they got the knowledge I got. And yes, pH level 7 will say do a straight detox of clean water, non-GMO fruits, herbs, with like walnuts, none. Okay? 
So truthfully, we should go amongst our brothers and sisters. And the, well, we're supposed to convocate on the Day of Atonement. It said, yeah, holy convocation. But if you got an issue with a brother and sister, then you're supposed to deal with them. You know, pick up the phone, call them, deal with them before. You know, and, and solve that issue before you go to the Most High and ask the Most High for forgiveness for your sins. He said, look, if you can't forgive somebody that in trespass against you, how, how do you expect for him to forgive you? If you can't have a mercy, no mercy, how would you expect for him to have mercy? All right, y'all, let me get up off this job, but then I'm going to say shalom, most high, Christ bless. I want to give dumb honors to the bishop, Bishop Nathaniel. I want to give honors to our deacons, our captains, our officers, our soldiers. All you brothers and sisters that's help pushing the truth to the end of the earth, shalom, y'all, most high, Christ bless.